Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's video is gonna be on ketogenic diets or ketosis in low thyroid or hypothyroid conditions. Again, ketogenic diets are all the buzz and so are hypothyroid issues. So we're gonna break it down today in the video. So let's dig in off the bat. So first off, what is a ketogenic diet? Well, a ketogenic diet is nothing more than allowing your body to run off of ketones for fuel, right? Ketones are the breakdown of fatty acids into things such as acetone, acetate, um, beta hydroxy butyrate BHB, and these are broken down from fat and our body can run off these fuel sources outside of just sugar. Now our body only needs about 20 gram, our brain only needs about 20 grams of sugar a day. And a lot of times it can actually do it via gluconeogenesis. Gluco meaning glucose, neo meaning new, genesis meaning forming. So it forms new glucose out of protein and it does that with cortisol. A lot of people think protein and glucose are the same thing, but no, the process of gluconeogenesis is slower than let's say having some sugar. So sugar will spike your blood sugar faster than let's say some protein or some grass-fed beef will. So just keep that in mind. So ketogenic diets, we're keeping the carbs extra, extra low because high amounts of insulin, high insulin will actually decrease, will decrease free fatty acid levels, all right? And we need to increase free fatty acids so those free fatty acids can now be converted to ketones. So let's reverse the equation here to make sense of it. So in, in other words, we need lower carbohydrates, typically at less than 20 to less than 50. And again, this is appetite, or this is, uh, I should say, metabolically variable. Some people who exercise a lot, they can get upwards of 200 carbs and still be spitting out more ketones than someone at less than 20 grams of carbohydrates. So keep that in mind. So again, less carbs, let's say the less than 20 to less than 50 for the average person, that will decrease insulin and that will increase free fatty acid and equals increase ketones. I hope that makes sense there so you guys can see it. So that's part of the equation, decreasing those carbohydrates. Now, another important part is, okay, great. We have the carbohydrate portion of the macronutrients dialed in. What about the protein and fat? Well, pretty good rule of thumb is your fat to protein ratio can be anywhere between one to one to four to one. So typically, the sweet spot's probably somewhere in the middle, two to three to one. Two to one's a pretty good starting point. So let's say I'm 215 pounds, right? So for myself, I typically do at least half to three quarters of my body weight in pounds, half, the three quarters of my body weight in, in pounds, right? So let's say 150 pounds, I convert that to grams. So 150 grams of protein, right? So if I convert that to fat now, so for myself, right, 215 pounds, what does that equal now? That's gonna equal 115 grams of protein And then let's say loosely 230 grams of fat. All right, just kind of a, a good Reader's Digest version. And you do the math on here, you got four, there's nine calories per gram of fat, right? So nine times 200, nine times 100 is gonna be 900, times two is going to be 1800, plus nine in the 30, that's 270. So you're looking at about 2,070 calories. 2,070 calories just with the fat. With the protein, four calories per gram of protein. So off the bat, 400, uh, four goes into 15, 60. 460, and let's say our fats right around, or let's say our carbohydrates right around 10%, right? So let's say my total calories, let's say it's around 50. 50 grams of carbohydrates, so then we're looking at what? 200. Then we're looking at about 200. 
So that my, do my, total da my total calorie consumption to keep myself at or around this ratio here, look at that, 200, let's see, 200, 70, I was gonna go into that, so let's see here, 2,000, 2,530, 2,730. And you guys can correct my math on the air. So that's about how many calories I'm consuming a day on average. And again, exercise will totally change that. So that can kind of give you a pretty good ratio. And again, we don't really need to worry about calories, but that gives you a pretty good idea how we're doing it. So that one to one to four to one ratio. And again, fat's got nine calories per gram, protein and carbohydrate both have four calories per gram. And when we're counting carbohydrate, by the way, when we're counting carbs, we're using net carbs, all right? So net carbs are gonna be your total carbohydrate and then you're gonna be subtracting the insoluble fiber. So for instance, one cup of broccoli has about six grams of carbohydrate. Once you subtract the insoluble fiber, you're at three and a half carbs. So one cup of broccoli is not six grams of carbohydrate, it's 3.5 net carbs. Now that may get a little bit hairy when you get into things, um, junk food, uh, net carbs, when you get things with a whole bunch of sugar alcohols in it, because sugar alcohols taste like a lot of sugar, right? And supposedly they don't count against your net carbs, but there may be some influence there. But regarding veggies, you're pretty safe to go with net carbs on the veggie side. So ketogenic diet, what is it? We're relying more on ketones. How are we getting there? Less than 20 to less than 50 on average. And then fat to protein ratio, typically two, two to three to one is probably your sweet spot. That's probably your sweet spot. Now let's go talk about the thyroid piece. We kind of ignored that. So first off, so your thyroid makes TSH or your brain makes TSH, right? Here's your brain. Your brain makes TSH and that talks to your thyroid. All right, this is a feedback loop. This is TSH right here. Perfect. Now, the rest of what happens here is T4, and that gets converted to T3. And this is your active thyroid hormone right here. Now, here are the various factors that will affect the T4 to T3 conversion. So off the bat here, insulin resistance. Now, this is where a ketogenic diet can help a lot of people that are coming into having a thyroid issue. Maybe they're overweight, maybe they have PCOS, there's an insulin resistance mechanism happening. The body's spitting out so much insulin that the cells are now getting numb to it, right? Someone knocks on my door, I go open the door. Oh, it's my dog's freaking out. <laughs> uh, I open the door, no one's there. I get a knock again, oh, and guess what? No one's there, now I stop going into the door. I'm numb to it. It's all right, butter, it's okay, it's okay. So she's getting, she's not numb to it, but I'm numb to it. So in general, that's what happens to your cells. Your cells get numb to the insulin. So if you have insulin resistance, going on a ketogenic diet can be huge at helping with the insulin resistance. Again, too much insulin can affect and can block that thyroid conversion, that T4, the tetra iodothyronine, tetra means four, iodo means four iodines attached to that tyrosine molecule there and that can affect the conversion. Low calorie diets, now here's the double-edged sword. Because I'm in the trenches, my sleeves are rolled up every week with different patients with thyroid issues, I see sometimes ketogenic diets hurting patients. Now, typically it's never because someone was overweight and went to a ketogenic diet and they got a negative result. It's mostly people that have been on a ketogenic diet for a very, very, very long time. Those are the ones that may suffer thyroid issues staying there too long, but not everyone. Some people have metabolic derangement where they're so insulin resistant, they need to be at a ketogenic diet just to bring, let's say their fasting insulin was at a 20, let's say to bring it to a six or a five, you know, an insulin sensitive range, they need to be ketogenic. But some people, by being ketogenic too long, right, they may actually lower their insulin, which is kind of what happens when you go low calorie. Think about it, if you're in a starvation situation and you haven't eaten in a long time, your body does what? It turns down the thermostat of your body, which is your thyroid. The same thing happens, the same thing happens um, when you go ketogenic for too long with certain people. This is the caveat, not everyone. How do I know? Because I've seen people go ketogenic and they've done great with their thyroid. I've seen others be ketogenic. I came in, we made some minor adjustments. 
what do we do? We up their carbohydrate 10 grams per week. Now we work on the adrenals and the thyroid, we work on the underlying body systems, we up their carbohydrate 10 grams per week every week. And when do we do it? Primarily at night when we're more sensitive to insulin and cortisol at its lowest. So we up 10 grams per week and what starts to happen is people start to get a little bit warmer fingers, maybe a little bit better hair growth starts coming back, their eyebrows get better, their fingernails get better, sleep gets better. So we will see that sometimes by upping the carbohydrate, they get better. And what we're postulating is here, we're helping that T4 to T3 conversion because a lot of those low thyroid symptoms get better even before we give thyroid hormone. Next, of course, various nutrients. We just put a blog post up on Justin Health about this, the top 10 thyroid nutrients, but Reader's Digest version, iron, zinc, selenium is so important, uh, vitamin A, uh, magnesium, iodine is important, but a double-edged sword if you have autoimmune conditions, uh, probiotics, amino acids, tyrosine, etc. Check out the link. We'll put the link below here, the top 10 nutrients for um, thyroid conditions. Again, cortisol and stress hormone. If our cortisol is too low, we won't be able to convert that thyroid hormone. If cortisol is too high, the stress of that thyroid will block the thyroid conversion and autoimmune. If we have an autoimmune issue where our TPO antibodies or thyroglobin antibodies, or maybe we're Graves on the hyper side, that can easily create an autoimmune issue. And then now we're attacking this gland here, and that may just affect the overall output. We may make less T4 to begin with. And then if we have other factors above, now we're not going to be able to convert. So we have damage to the gland and less conversion as well. So again, insulin resistance and low calorie diet, ketogenic diet may mimic this. Not the same thing though. Why isn't it the same thing? Because we're missing nutrients on a low calorie diet. On a ketogenic diet, we're mimicking that low calorie physiology because we're spitting out a whole bunch of ketones but we're getting a whole bunch of nutrients coming in from our grass-fed meat, maybe our fats and butters, fat-soluble vitamins, maybe cod liver oil, maybe some liver. So we're getting a whole bunch of nutrients coming in, but we're mimicking that fasting physiological state, which may lower our insulin too much in certain individuals. So again, if you're a ketogenic diet, if you're a ketogenic diet person now and you're getting great results, stay with it. If you're on a ketogenic diet and you're flatlining, the next step is to increase 10 carbohydrate grams per week, primarily at night. Use safe starchy sources, sweet potatoes, squash, plantains, etc. And again, click down below and subscribe and make sure you schedule a new patient consult with myself so we can dig in deeper. Because if you have other issues, whether it's infections or other gut stuff or other hormone stuff, that may be a barrier that prevents you from going above and beyond outside of just the carbohydrate increase. So again, a lot of knowledge bombs dropped today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe, and I look forward to bringing more information your way. Thanks. Have a great day.